Yo, what's going on guys? Johnny GB here bringing you guys my draft recap for the ICBA, the International Competitive Battling Association. This is a rebrand of the CBA as the CBA is split into what is now called the Hive. I will link them down below. And the ICBA kind of just split separated paths and I'm bringing you guys the draft recap as you guys have over have seen over on the ICBA channel we've already done the rules and the coach announcements so I will link that channel down below go check that out if you haven't seen the rules or the uh, coach reveals yet but now getting into the moment of truth we were stuck with I believe the sixth or seventh pick um, it, it was kind of just a rough spot to pick from seven and you know what? I made most of what I could. There were a couple S tier mons I did want, uh, but really wasn't interested in many of the S tier mons. I decided to go with something different, and I went with Garchomp. Uh, I've never used Garchomp in a league. I've seen it been used. It uses Z moves very well, uh, whether mostly Z attacking moves um, to help with its fire coverage or just make its earthquake a little bit stronger. Um, and I like it because of its potential with defensive Garchomp. Uh, I've used defensive Garchomp actually a lot on the OU ladder. Again, OU and League are going to be a little bit different, so it's very matchup dependent on what I'm going against. Um, other good sets, Choice Scarf, Life Orb, Swords Dance. It does get a couple good special moves as text that it can use. Uh, got a lot of utility moves like Stealth Rocks and Toxic Substitute. So there's a good balance on Garchomp. Uh, very, very easy for me to try to mess around with because it has a few good rolls and a few, uh, a uh, few great rolls. Very good stat-wise. Base 130 attack has 102 speed, which is very nice speed barrier uh, speed to have to deal with a lot of the base 100s that go around, such as Mew, Jirachi. Celebi, Manaphy, um, as well as some other threats to it, such as Kirim Black at base 95. So, very good speed, very good defense, uh, defensive stats. You have 108 HP, 95 defense, 85 special defense, so it's no slouch defensively either, which just makes this a very good first round pick for me. And I also get two things that I think are needed in drafts, a dragon type and a ground type. Um, a very hard hitting dragon and ground type. So to pair with Garchomp, I needed a good Steel type, and I wanted to get my Stealth Rockers early on in the draft. So I decided to go with Jirachi. Now I'm very familiar using Jirachi, and I'm very familiar using Jirachi with Z moves actually. So so far, Garchomp and Jirachi are two of my Z move users, and two that I'm actually very happy with. Uh, I've used Jirachi a lot, used it in CBA Season 1, I used it in the PMC, so there is familiarity with using Jirachi along with the versatility of especially defensive, sub-toxic, choice scarf, choice band, choice specs, so it has a lot of roles, none of which it's the best in its class of doing, but it still has a bunch of roles that make it a little bit more painful to try to prep for along with a very good um, physical and special move pool. I think just really make Jirachi a Pokemon I love using. Um, again, most people know that I've been known to... I ran pretty much Choice Scarf all of CBA Season 1. Um, but through Z-moves, I've learned that there are some Z-moves that are beneficial to Jirachi, and it was one of the main reasons. When I saw it towards the end of Round 2, I'm like... This isn't really a round two Pokemon, but you know what? I'll snag it up, and it will be the start of my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Um, having the Psychic typings very good, deal with a lot of Poison types that eh, give me a little bit of issues in the later half of my draft, along with Fighting types. Fighting types actually give me a big problem in my draft. But you know what? Jirachi second round pick, I think it was like 22nd overall. I'll take it. Next up we're gonna go with my fairy type and I was a little bit surprised I wasn't sure how I was gonna plan this out I didn't know what I was going to do points wise uh, with my free points because 
the draft was similar to CBA Season 3 where we broke it down into GBA tiers instead of doing an open draft. Um, so I was real confused what I was doing points wise, but I ended up taking Clefable. So right away, uh, right off the bat, I have three tier 1As. And I thought, you know what, I'll splurge a little bit and get me a good core. And Clefable does that. It also gives me my third Stealth Rocker in my first three picks. Now, Clefable doesn't want to run Stealth Rocks every week, but it's still a viable Stealth Rocker. Now, its stats, um, you can say, aren't overly great. I mean, base 95 HP, 95 Special Attack, and 90 Special Defense to go along with base 73 Speed. Eh. I mean, it's not your ideal stat total for a defensive Mon, um, but it does get two very good abilities, Magic Guard and Unaware, which allow this thing to soak up status conditions, which is very good since I do have Jirachi and Garchomp. Jirachi doesn't want to be T-waved or burned, Garchomp doesn't want to be burned, so I do have Clefable here to absorb those different status ailments. Um, also access to setup, Combine sets. You also have Reliable Recovery in uh, Soft Boiled, along with some other interesting moves like Thunder Wave, Knock Off, just utility moves that help Clefable do its job. It's also a Cleric, which is good just in case Jirachi or Garchomp does get burned, or Jirachi does get paralyzed, or some status ailments on any of my other Pokemon. Um, Clefable can provide a cleric role. Heal Bell, Wish. Wish passing into some of my later Pokemon that require it are very good. Um, so it's a Pokemon I've never used in Leech, so Garchomp and Clefable I've never used, so I'm going to experiment with them and see whether I truly really do like them in the League format. Now, fourth pick in the draft, I needed a Tier 2. And tier 2 was my, one of my least favorite tiers to pick from. Um, but there was a Mon that I actually wanted to snag before anybody else took it because I feel like a physical fire type is needed in a draft. And I decided to go with Entei as my tier 2 pick. And I'm very happy with this as my tier 2 pick. One, it gets priority in extreme speed very useful to have extreme speed, especially late in games if your opponent has mons that are already weakened. Base 115 HP, 85 and 75 respective defenses. It's not bad. The HP stat, very good. 115 attack, it's, it's decent. I mean, it's not top tier, but it's a very good attack stat to have. And then base 100 speed. So right now, my speed tiers I'm very happy with. Two base 100s, 102 with Garchomp. Clefable, 60. Eh, that's about as slow as I'm going to get on the team. Uh, I believe so. And Entei's just more known to be that heavy hitter going with moves such as Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Flare Blitz. Also access to some other moves such as Bulldoze to help it slow down some of the other uh, some of my opponents checks potentially to it um, also it's a very good z-move user but I did not choose it as my z-move user um, stuff like bloom doom do help Entei or continental crush the rock z-move uh, just help out Entei deal with some stuff that may switch into it also does get a couple good utility moves in Toxic and Will-O-Wisp. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is going to be that heavy hitter. You bring it in to damage something on my opponent's team, and that's what Entei's goal is um, going to be for this season. Now, following up Entei, I wanted a good grass type because I really had no good ground resistance at this point. Um, Garchomp, it defensive, takes Earthquakes well, but I mean, it's just not the greatest ground switching in the world. So, I decided to go with Chestnut. And I've never used Chestnut in a league before, but one thing I do enjoy now, I have access to Spikes. So now I'm allowed to Hazard Stack my opponent, which will be very good 
especially on teams that don't have the best hazard removal, or I do have solutions to deal with their hazard removal. Uh, I have a lot of Pokemon that can force switches in Garchomp, Jirachi, Entei so far, that if I'm able to force switches and have them take Stealth Rock and Spikes damage, it makes the game a lot easier. And Chestnut does that. It's able to set spikes. Also gets access to Spiky Shield, so I can scout and also deal damage at the same time. Access to Leech Seed is very useful for some form of recovery. Gets other moves such as Seed Bomb, Drain Punch, Wood Hammer, all that help Chestnut do the roll. And I do have a Flying Resistance in Jirachi, so not too concerned about having that times four week to flying. Uh, but having a nice ground resistance and pretty much a good physical wall helps out the balance of my team and also this is the second part of my fire water grass core so now we're starting now I'm making sure I got my cores I already had known what my water will be and that was determined to the through the Megan S tier but very happy with the chestnut pick I think it will provide very good defensive role for me this season alright next up I needed a little bit of speed on the team um, and I need a little bit of volt turn and I decided to go with Jolteon. Jolteon to me is one of my favorite electric types to use in league format and the last couple drafts I've had I've not had an electric type until late in the season. PMC I didn't pick up Zapdos until week 9 up from a trade with the Verd. So having an electric type I think is just very beneficial to the to my draft and just my playstyle because I like to volt switch and U-turn out of there. Now Volt Turn's not the only thing Jolteon gets, as it does get Baton Pass. So it has two forms of passing, and again, this is a very good Z-move attacking user, but it wasn't one I was very satisfied with using. Um, it's able to help out with stuff like Shadow Ball and um, Signal Beam, some coverage moves that Jolteon usually runs to deal with some some more threats. Uh, but it's going to provide me a good offensive mon that can volt switch or baton pass into some of my other Pokemon safely and allow me just to have advantage as that's something I'd like to have is have good switch initiative to make sure that I can always have the upper hand in the battle. So Jolteon was one that got it round six and I'm not regretting picking Jolteon up at all. Now, just because I need, I wanted to get this before one I, at the time. Four teams needed a Mega or an S tier, and I decided to go with Mega Blastoise. Oh, there we go. Decided to go with Mega Blastoise to complete my Fire Water Grass, but it also provides me a good form of hazard removal. And having Clefable and Jirachi wish pass into Blastoise help it out because Blastoise doesn't get any form of recovery outside Aqua Ring. So, don't want to really make Aqua Ring viable. So, having th some Wish Pass into Blastoise, very beneficial. I also have a Cleric, just in case if it gets toxic. I have Clefable as a Cleric. Um, Jolteon as a Cleric, if you want to consider that. And then, um, it's also a very hard hitter. Uh, Mega Launcher really does help out with stuff like Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere, Ice Beam. A lot of those coverage moves that Blastoise likes to run. Um, also basic stabs, Hydro Pump, Scald Surf, so it's a mon I've never used in League format before. I've always wanted to use Mega Blastoise. I've seen it used very well. I've seen it used to pick up a lot of kills. I've also seen it be a very good defensive Pokemon, being able to be a solid hazard removal option, and having Spike, Stealth Rock, and Rapid Spin is just very good because I don't have to defog, get rid of the hazards from my opponent's side and my side when I can just rabbit spin, get the hazards away from my side and still force him, um, f still force my opponent to have to switch out because of how hard this thing hits. Now, um, watching Six Foot Hacks in the UCL really made me want to draft Mega Blastoise uh, because it does force a lot of switches. Some bulky waters do not like dealing with Blastoise. Uh, Jellicent, one that I can name off the top of my head, uh, that just doesn't like switching into Blastoise because of Dark Pulse. Um, but uh, I do have solutions to those bulky waters. I mean, I have Chestnut, I have 
Jolteon, both as checks to bulky waters like Vaporeon, Milotic, so I'm not too concerned about Blastoise being walled by many things as it can be a very, not a wall breaker, but enough to position me well for the rest of the game. Alright, next up I decided to go with Aerodactyl. Now, Aerodactyl provides me my second form of hazard removal on the team. Two I think is okay. Uh, with the Defog Aerodactyl. This is also my third third and final Z-Move user because Aerodactyl uses Z-Moves very well, especially with its coverage, being able to get the Elemental Fangs. It also helps out with its dreaded Flying Stab. Aerodactyl's really stuck in between using Wing Attack or Aerial Ace, so Z-moves will help out Aerodactyl deal with some of the threats to my team. Uh, fighting types really just hurt my team. Outside of Chestnut uh, and Clefable, I'm actually really scared of stuff like Conkeldur. Um, so Aerodactyl provides me as a good check to Conkeldur and just other fighting types in general. Also, Rock type, very spammable typing. Um, it and Ghost Type, I think, are the two most spammable uh, moves in the game. And it does get a reliable one in Stone Edge, depending on what you want to call re reliable. Um, it also, again, it's the Defogger. And it provides my team more speed. Because I have 102, 100, 100. Now I get two Mons at 130, I believe. Let me just double check on Aerodactyl. I know Jolteon is 130. And... Aerodactyl does provide me with a base 130 speed. So now I got some speed on the team. Um, there's still some Mons in the tier, uh, in the league that do outspeed me. Mega Alakazam, Feromosa, um, Mega, uh, not Mega Manetric because it's not out yet. Um, Mega Aerodactyl. So there are some threats that still outspeed me, but I wanted to make sure I had a decent speed uh, limit so that potentially I could run some bulk on some of my mons that don't need as much speed. So very happy with the Aerodactyl pick. Never have used this in the league either. I've never really seen it used as well. Alright, next up I needed a spin blocker because didn't want hazards to be removed from my opponent's side of the field and Spirit Tomb does that job and it also has a very good ability and pressure which allows it to stall out some of my opponent's moves. Also can be a very good setup sweeper with Calm Mind Rest Talk, so a special version of Snorlax. Albeit, um, my Fairy Resist on the team is okay. Um, along with my Ferramosa Resist, they're not the greatest because of uh, its Ice Beam and Bug Coverage. Um, but Spirit Tomb mostly is there to be that spin blocker, to be a defensive Mon. Base 108, special defense and defense is very nice. Uh, base 90 attack and special attack. And the downside to Spirit Tomb is its speed. At base 35 and base 50 HP. Those are the two things really just holding back Spirit Tomb. Um, gets access to a couple good utility moves in Sucker Punch and Pursuit. Uh, Pursuit trapping some of the psychic types do help out uh, later on in the game because stuff like Tapu Lele, although it can just moonblast me, depending on the Lele set, I can Pursuit Trap it. Sucker Punch works out for some of the other frail mons that, hey, they're about to die, I can just pick them off real quick with Spirit Tomb. So it's a mon that I was using in the PMC, and I was using it fairly well actually in the PMC, albeit it did not get brought until later on in the season. Next up's turning into one of my favorite mods after using it in the PMC, and that's Kecleon. Um, I love just all the stuff Kecleon can do. It's a Stealth Rocker, so now I got four Stealth Rockers. It gets three forms of priority, Sucker Punch, Shadow Sneak, and Fake Out, all which really help it out. It gets very good coverage, physically and specially, the Elemental Punches, gets Shockwave, it's very other, uh, some other good utility moves, Toxic and Thunder Wave. So it's a somewhat form of speed control with Thunder Wave, being able to slow down my opponent's team. It can deal a good amount of damage to my opponent's Pokemon. 
uh, elemental punches help it out fake out sucker punch so there's a lot of good things that Kecleon can do um, and to go with base 90 HP or base 90 attack base 60 HP is eh but it does have a nice base 120 special defense stat which allows it to switch into some special moves um, but its coverage is just really it's just outstanding to go along with one of the best abilities in the game Protean only available by one other Pokemon and Greninja so being able to switch types um, can help Kecleon be a little bit of a problem especially depending on if your opponent's Pokemon do, does not have enough coverage on the team now I could have chose this as a Z-Move user but I felt like Garchomp, Jirachi, and Aerodactyl were my better options but I love using Kecleon I think it's turning slowly turning into my, one of my top 10 favorite Mons to draft and draft league format. And then finally, for our final pick, I only had 20 points left available for this pick, and I wanted Stunfisk to give me a second ground type, give me an electric immunity outside of Jolteon and Garchomp, because Garchomp doesn't like HP Ices, and Jolteon's not all that bulky. So Stunfisk was on my list, but that unfortunately was taken. So I ended up going with Rotom Fan, and you know what? I. I actually am happy with this pick because Rotom Fan does provide me another ground immunity. Uh, my only other ground immunity is Aerodactyl. Rotom Fan, to me, helps fill that role. Now, this does give me another Pokemon that gets Volt Switch, so I can start playing with Volt Turn. Gives me more utility in will o -Wisp, Tos to Toxic, and Trick. So there's a lot that I can do with Rotom Fan. Granted, I mean, its typing is not the greatest. Um, it provides me another ground immunity and another status mon that I can just spam Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, Thunder Waves. So I'm actually fairly happy being able to snag it for 20 points. It was probably one of the few good mons that were left in um, the Tier 5B but that is my draft for the ICBA here um, I'm very pleased with it I feel like some things I would change I would probably pick up another hazard removal option or probably have picked up something that could get toxic spikes potentially so that I can just hazard stack um, but I feel like I have a good amount of bulk on the team. I don't really have any dedicated walls to anything. I feel like a lot of these Pokemon are very balanced and stuff that I like to use, uh, along with some stuff that I've not used before. Uh, Clefable, Chestnut, Mega Blastoise, Aerodactyl, Rotom Fan, all Mons I've never used before, along with Garchomp. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see this first season of the ICBA, how I stack up against uh, some of the competition. Um, without an S tier mon, that was a lot of the first mons drafted were Magearna, Kiram Black, Ash, I mean, Protean Greninja, Darkrai, Feromosa, Tapu Lele. So, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how I deal with some of the adversity this season. Not, not really adversity, but some of the matchups this season, uh, going against some very solid coaches. So, if you guys enjoyed this draft recap, go ahead, leave a like on the video, comment your guys' support. Also, subscribe to my channel, the ICBA channel. Again, guys, go check out the Hive. Um, that's just the other half of the CBA. That is what's over there. So if you guys are wondering where some of those coaches are, go down below, check their channel out, subscribe to the coaches there because they have, very, they have a very fun and interesting way that you're conducting this league. Um, all that will be available on their channel. Uh, but until then, guys, I am Johnny GB, and I'm out.